All right, let's get started. We've uh, moved to the shop and we can, uh, we, can sh we can basically produce the exact same product that we're producing out of our commercial facility with just what you see here. Inside this cooler, we have deer trim, venison trim, 2020. So this is from the 2020 season. Vacuum sealed up real nice in the meat vacuum seal bags. We're gonna get it out, we're gonna get it ground, and we're gonna extrude it on some racks and in the dehydrator. Today we're gonna to be making two of our favorites. We're gonna be using our Beard or Butcher Blend Original, along with some barbecue sauce to make original bites. And then we're also gonna be doing hot because um, we like those two, um, some of our favorites. So we're gonna show you just how much seasoning to put into it. We're gonna be using the dehydrator to get the final product. And um, because we're using a dehydrator, we're actually gonna add a little bit of natural smoke flavoring and should be a lot of fun. So let's get started. Okay, so um, we've got, and we'll do this often where we'll take and we'll put up meat in the freezer from the previous year's kill. So that way we can make it into a product. Basically it's a clean slate and we can start with it. Now these happen to be um, chunks that are not ground you can and we and we are actually supplementing because we just didn't have quite enough of the the chunks of trim you can supplement with some ground product now in this case we're just going to kind of feed it through the grinder as we go if you already have previously ground you can certainly do the same thing you're just going to have to hand knead the seasonings into it before you use the jerky gun to extrude it so both work we're going to be using what is um is a is a pretty lean um version just because the fat that you put in this particular product it's you know say in terms of like a bratwurst or something you know you you want a high percentage of fat in fact we'll use pork fat a lot of the time um, but in this case we um, we don't want a lot of fat because we're trying to dry this product down and we don't want anything that's going to be um, rancid fat can turn rancid especially pork so you'll notice i carefully got that out we're, we're dehydrating this product. So the more liquid that's in it, the longer it's gonna to take to dehydrate. Um, we're gonna be starting with our original again, Scott's Hot Tip. If you're gonna be going from like a, a milder flavor of spice to a hot, don't start with the hot because it could possibly carry over um, just through your equipment. And then somebody that doesn't like hot stuff has gotta deal with that. So start with your original or your mild flavors and then move to the hot. So like Scott mentioned, we're gonna do our original Bearded Butcher Blend seasoning. And then we're also gonna put barbecue, our Bearded Butcher barbecue sauce in it. Um, we're gonna blend these two together for a barbecued jerky bite. It's gonna be delicious, I know it. I'm gonna tear my dial scale for the way the lug. So if I put that on there, it's about a pound and a quarter. And then I can actually use this dial on top and I can dial this back to zero. Am I at zero, Spencer? Looks like it. Okay. All right, so now that we've got that teared, we want exactly uh, 12 pounds of meat in our lug here. So I'm at 11, that's where we're gonna add this one pound of our previously ground venison. It's got a little bit of fat in it, that's okay. So now we're up to our 12 pounds. Just Time remember, for our spices. If you have meat left over in your freezer from last season, this is a perfect opportunity. Get it thawed out, get it made into something that you know your family and friends are gonna enjoy and you're gonna eat it. That's right. So I'm gonna go with one six ounce shaker, which is gonna do my entire 12 pounds. We get, um, if you don't have a, a, a way to weigh this out, you can use tablespoons. It's one tablespoon per pound or one ounce of this per two pounds of meat. That's gonna go in. Look at that, nice. That's when the aroma starts hitting you. So if you were working with a previously just ground product, you can just hand knead it in there. We like to grind our spices into our um, tr or excuse me add the spices to the trim and then grind 
couple of reasons that's going to distribute that flavor through there very evenly also we're going to get just a little bit of protein extraction we're going to do a double grind on this so that's going to give us just a little bit of protein extraction and um, help this meat bind together seth you want to do the honors with the barbecue i can do that smoky a little bit of sweet a little bit of tang barbecue sauce is phenomenal and of course barbecue is going to add some liquid but that's okay because it's gonna it's gonna cook down get nice and tacky and it just it just adds that really nice it doesn't overpower the flavor either we don't have to adjust our dry spice we've done this a lot and it just turns out what we consider so now that i've got those blended in there we are going to add sodium nitrite pink cure we like to use that uh, with our game meats alternative is the celery juice powder and then we're going to add some natural hickory smoke flavor what's going to be interesting is that both the hot and the original seasoned with barbecue bites are going in the dehydrator all at the same time. So it's gonna be interesting to see um, if this one takes a little bit longer to dehydrate since it has that moisture from the barbecue sauce in it. But uh, one thing we have today is time. So if it does, takes a little bit longer, that's okay. So put something on there, I can weigh that out. Hit the tear button. So this packet right here is for 25 pounds of meat. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and divide that by, by half. Pink curing salt. This is called Sure Cure. Number 813 is also uh, a tinted cure you can use. We'll throw in some Amazon links. You can go there and find your cure um, if you wish to do so. You can sprinkle our Sure Cure on there. How about now, you let me mix I, since I have the gloves on? Go for it. Now we're going to go to our hickory smoke powder. Hickory smoke powder is a game changer, especially if you're using like a food dehydrator where you're not getting that the smoke, you know, from a pellet grill or something like that, or your, you know, your smoker, your vertical smoker, um, just adds some really nice flavor. Here again, we'll throw in a link. You can go there, get some of the hickory smoke powder. It's a natural hickory smoke powder, um, and it just adds a really nice element to your smoked meats. One of the great things about this scale is we can go from uh, the different units, which the fans are blowing on it, sensitive, so it's bounced around a little bit, but we can go with the different units. Um, we, we just weighed that bag before and then we just divide it in half. In this case, I can go by ounces. So this one bag does, um, eight ounces does 100 pounds of meat. So for the 12 pounds, I need um, an ounce. It's okay to go a little heavy on this. We often do just because it's such a great flavor and you really can't go wrong. So maybe we'll go to just, just about an ounce and a quarter. Close enough. This stuff really, if you're doing a product where you don't have a smoker involved, it really adds just a great flavor. Hickory smoke, original blend spices, barbecue sauce, I think we're on the path for a successful flavor profile with this one. This one and a half horse grinder for meat does a really good job. Um, the chunks, you know, we typically make them just a little bit larger than stew size pieces, but you can see the hole inside this grinder. If it was that size, uh, and you had your plunger, I'm pretty sure this grinder would take it. Uh, fantastic, this thing just absolutely loves to eat through whatever you send through it. So, little tip for you. You can see we have a cutting board underneath of the grinder, and that gives us height to get our lug underneath the grinder head. So just keep that in mind. Get yourself a two by four, two by six will work. Probably two by six would be better or something like we have here, just to elevate that grinder up a little bit to get that lug underneath there. So, All little right. tip for you. Beam me up, Scotty. You ready? Yep. This grinder is gonna chew through this. First, we're gonna coarse grind. 
and then we're gonna fine grind. You shut me down, Seth. One of the nice things about these grinders is that they're, um, you don't need any tools. So I've changed out my, go from my coarse to my fine. I'm ready to go back at it. Okay, ready? Go for it. So remember this grinder has forward and reverse. So if you get into a situation here, you can always bump the reverse button, but uh, keep that in mind. That has a lot to do with the mixer attachment too. True. And um, just remember when you go to flip this on, you do not want it in reverse to try to do this grind. I never ever get tired of seeing those meat strands come out of there. All right, it's time for hot. Again, one six ounce shaker for our 12 pounds of meat, our pink cure, and and you'll notice on the last one, I mixed one and then the other. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna blend this in here enough that it's, it's all. And then with the grinding, being able to do the grinder, um, use the grinder to further blend. One of the reasons we like to do that. The smell, whoo, wow, does it smell good. It's making my mouth water. Now Seth and I are going on an elk hunt in just a couple of weeks. So this is uh, one of the reasons why we're grinding up some snacks um, so that we have something to take along with us. And that's really the purpose for this is a snack that you can carry along with you in a backpack. Um, we're gonna be out in the, in the wilderness for a week. So these are gonna be preserved to a point where that's not gonna be a problem. Whether you're hunting, hiking, backpacking, or you just want some snacks around the house, this is just a great way to utilize whatever you, whatever resources that you have. You wanna shut me off, bro? One of the things I like to do is try not to handle the switch to our grinder with dirty hands that's just one more thing that you have to clean one of the things that we've learned about the commercial operation is just the cleaner you can keep it off the bat the less you'll have to do down the road especially when you're the guy that has to clean especially it. especially when you're the guy that has to clean it i would like to mention on the trimmings that we're grinding um, those were in the freezer we thawed them out in our cooler there were some pieces in there that were still a little bit frozen um, so this, the, these grindings are extremely cold. Yeah, never a bad so, thing. We, we often talk about the importance of keeping stuff cold, especially the grinder is adding friction. Friction creates heat. And when meat gets warm, it starts doing some really funny things in terms of you can see the proteins and the, et cetera, You can et see the frost on here, so you can see how, or the condensation on here, so you can see how cold this is. The other thing that you can do is put this head in the freezer for an hour or so, and that'll really help your process. I'm a big fan of hot stuff, so I don't know which one I'm more excited about, the hot or the barbecue. Well, you make some of it hot, that way the kids stay out of it. They don't eat it all. That barbecue will be gone in two days. 
All right, grinding is complete. Look at that, clean plunger means I didn't have to use it. Now it's still a one and a half horsepower grinder. Um, we were so spoiled by our commercial equipment. Uh, I understand this is, this is a big dog, but the point I'm making here is whenever we use the meat equipment in, the, in basically the home environment, um, we don't even feel like we're making a trade off from commercial to home use because the stuff works at such a level that is way above average. So we've got, stick that in there to identify that so we don't uh, mix them up. I've got my other lug down here with my original. Let's time to get the jerky gun out and start filling some racks. Okay, so um, Spence, get tight on this, this jerky gun. This piece of equipment is what we do all of our R&D with in terms of um, our commercial operation. And this particular gun has pushed hundreds of pounds of meat out of it just while we were doing stuff. It's held up really well. This is what we're gonna be using to put on our racks. Um, I have a little bit of cooking spray here and I'm gonna spray these racks prior to use. Stack them up like this. That way when you, you hit these racks, you're getting more than just the top one. That's just gonna help it keep from sticking. Give me a little shot there inside the gun. Yes, another little tip is that we put a little cooking spray. Go ahead and back your plunger yeah, just out. Go ahead. I'll just do it as you go. There you go. That's good. There we go, a little lubrication never hurts. So let's just get started. What we wanna do is just take our meat and roll it into a cylindrical a log, shape. Like a cylinder and just get it started inside the tube. Tell you what, I got an idea. How about me? I make your, you do the cylinders. How about me. I make your logs for you? We do have a little bit of that tackiness, that protein extraction that I talked about going on. Um, not too much, not something like we would want with a stick. So there are two attachments for this gun. And we have the flat one, which is going to be like our, our jerky bite attachment. And we're going to want to have it positioned on there. We're not going to want to turn it sideways and then have it going with our handle because then you got to turn the whole gun sideways. So we're actually going to turn it against our handle, tighten it a little bit. And this is going to be just like a caulking gun. So you just start squeezing. Doesn't have to be a super fast processed, nice uniform pieces. Go at the speed you like. And you definitely want to create a space in between each of your slivers of extruded chopped and formed jerky, because that way it'll cook evenly in between each strip so the cool thing about doing something like this is it's actually really fun knowing that first tray bro what about what you get to <laughs> i know <laughs> what no i'm just joking. but thinking about the snacks that we get to eat especially while we're in the back country on an elk hunt knowing that it's from deer that our boys shot and you know, making it at home ourselves. Well, that highlights the point that the ingredients that are involved in this are um, very pure in the sense that, you know, where the meat came from and then our spices that are used, not to mention absolutely delicious. Wow. How's that for you? That's an impressive looking tray of fantastic looking snacks. Last tray complete and they are beauties. So only thing left to do is get them in the dehydrator. I've got Meats 10 tray dehydrator here. Beautiful. Default, it's 
going to be 10 hours. Now, you're going to ask, how long is it going to take? It's like good barbecue. It's done when it's done. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and back it off to, we're going to start with six hours. And then as far as temperature, um, default's 158. I'm going to go to the max of 167. All only thing left to do is wait on our delicious snacks. We are down to the final minute and the aroma that's coming out of this dehydrator is oh so aromatic. Has my stomach growling. I'm ready for a snack. Yep, so six hours are counting down. We've got, there it is. Five trays of original, five trays of hot. Let's get one out here and see what we got. Oh my, ooh, that's a little bit hot. All right, Spencer, look at that. It's like you get the bend test going here. Now, as far as time, you can, you can certainly go to more of a personal preference type thing. Um, if, you, if you feel the product, you can feel if it's squishy or not. You can look and see if it's, um, you, can, you can even break it in half and see if it's cooked thoroughly like so. So Thank this you. is gonna be the original with Man. the barbecue in it. We're gonna give it a try. Didn't that guy that put these on the tray do a good job? Fantastic nice little, uniform little pieces. Toast. Mm. Oh yeah. What a fantastic bingo snack. Let me get some of the hot out here. That's really good. Barbecue's coming through. Original spice is coming through. Wow. Hot Scott coming right up. That's really good. Oh yeah. Hold on a second, I gotta finish my first piece. I didn't leave mine laying on the table like you did. Yeah. Oh man. A little bit of that moisture on the outside of it so we know it's not gonna be super dry. Mm. So, at this point, we're going to get our racks out, let them cool down. We're going to show you what you can do about cutting them up, package them up, best way to hold on to them. Here's the cool thing. We have 10 of these racks. You think about all those strips cut into pieces for snacks, that's a lot of snacks. So That is fantastic. All right, let's get them cooled down. Let's do a little packing. All right, we're going to make ours into bites, so... This is where you get the scissors out. You make the kids earn their keep. Have them do this. Just tell them that they can eat all they want. And then the uh, you know you guys can make these lengths whatever you want. So if you don't like little bites like this, just make them a little bit bigger. Yep. And then as far as what you're going to do with them at this point, obviously you can do some Ziploc bags. You can do whatever. I'm just going to show you demonstrate we're gonna throw a handful in a bag like so now you can add um, oxygen scavengers you can get these on Amazon drop an oxygen scavenger in there I can't tell you all the scientific data um, about how much it will allow whatever but it's just gonna absorb the oxygen the big companies they'll flush it so this is an oxygen-free environment, so you effectively get the same thing by just offer, or adding the scavenger. I've got this turned down to just five degrees, because I don't want to actually suck it down. I just want to seal it up. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? Some of those are going in my pack on the elk hunt, that's for sure. A couple more to go in here. Get a tight shot there, Spencer. That's the product that we just produced. There's our commercial version that you saw where we started out this morning showing you what it takes to do a commercial operation. That is amazing. We were able to produce essentially the exact same thing right here in this shop using the made with meat equipment. And now, you can walk out to your tree stand, go on your camping trip, do whatever. You've got some delicious, healthy snacks that you can share with your family. With products that were in the freezer from last season that um, we know for a fact are now gonna get eaten. 
So not that we would have beaten them before, but it may have taken us a little bit longer. This I know for a fact is gonna get gobbled up in a hurry. With all the kids we have running around here, I should probably hide a few bags if we wanna take them on our elk hunt. That's so, absolutely right. So that's, that's absolutely fantastic. Madewithme.com or meetyourmaker.com. You can go and get all this equipment. We've got some more trays to pack up just like so, but at the end of the day, we're gonna have over 40, somewhere around 50 packages of venison that we pulled out of the freezer made into these fantastic snacks that we can share with family and friends and a product that you can be proud of. Absolutely, so uh, someone may ask, you know, what's it like, the texture like and the taste compared to a whole muscle jerky? Whole muscle jerky is where you actually take the whole muscle, you slice it, and then you lay those strips onto your trays and cook them that way. Um, this has a very nice bite. It's easy to chew. So if you have people that maybe don't prefer to tear a piece of jerky, they may like this version a little bit better. So That's right, um, and with whole muscle, you're limited to just certain portions of the animal. This is literally the same thing you would make into a ground portion. You can even use- Turned your, into a jerky. You can even use your previously ground product to make this. So awesome snack. We're taking it hunting. We hope you do too, because it is phenomenal. So there you have it. We hope you enjoyed the video on how to make snacks just like so using the made with meat equipment, using meat from your freezer, using the knowledge that you learned from the bearded butchers, and of course, using our spices. We think they turned out great. We know if you follow these same steps, you're gonna get the same results at home. We wanna thank you for watching today's videos. Thank you for all the subscriptions. Just remember, subscribe, click that bell for notifications every time we put up a new video and we'll see you next time. There's a bunch more to come. Go check out the meat equipment. Until next time, see ya.